Danny. I'm just going to just go for it. Just go for it. Hi, I'm here today with an up and coming band from Calhoun County, Stadium Drive. I'd like to talk to uh, each member individually. i will start with you. Tell me your name and where you're from. Uh, my name is Blake Graham. I'm from Fort Payne. My name is Andrew May, and I'm from Alexandria. My name is Tanner Kuhn. I'm from White Plains. Cool. Uh, how long have you guys been together? Us three? For uh, about a year. The band? About eight years now. Awesome. Uh, can each member tell me what instrument they play? Uh, I play the bass guitar and do backing vocals. I play guitar and I am lead vocals. And I play drums. Cool. Okay, um, let me ask you guys this. Do you guys have anything new that you're working on? We have an EP in the works and we're going to begin recording here in a couple of weeks. What would you guys rather do, play live or record? Play live. Play live. I would yeah. much rather play live, yes. Cool. All right. Um, I'm going to go around the uh, the table, and you tell me one thing that you really like about each of your bandmates. Keep it clean. <laughs> uh, even though we laugh and cut up a lot, we still get a lot done for shows and anything that we work on. I like it. Agreed. The work that we get done is pretty incredible, considering <laughs> past members. I like uh, their energy when they play. I played a, with a lot of people that are just very flat. I like that they they get into it and get a lot of energy with their performances. Cool. Um, where do you see this band at the end of the year? What would you like to have accomplished between now and the end of 2024? Possibly playing festivals. Agreed. That and hopefully an album. That, that was mine, so hopefully it helped. You stole your answer. Blake, how long have you been playing your instrument? What led you to choose that instrument? And do you have any musical heroes that kind of inspired you to get into the music business? I've been playing for about eight years, and back whenever I first got into high school, I had a couple buddies that would all play guitar and drums, and I wanted to be different from them and start picking up bass so we can all jam as a group. And I would say some of my heroes is either Mark Hoppus, Fat Mike from No Effects, or... Chris Novoselic. I started playing when I was five. I played piano. My grandmother taught me pretty much everything that I know to this day. Um, went through a long string of not really learning anything else because, you know, she's, she's just great. She is a great piano player. And uh, my biggest influences are Buddy Holly, Justin Towns Earl, and Dave Grohl. Uh, yeah, I've been playing, I just passed nine years. Um, I don't really know what inspired me to do drums. Just one day I thought they looked cool and wanted to try them. Um, my biggest influences were probably probably John Bonham, Dave Grohl, and then Trey Cool from Green Day. Those are probably my biggest three. Awesome. Okay, um, Blake, tell me about your favorite show you've ever been to. Oof. Probably... Probably Blue Man Group. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't say it's Blue Man Group. Uh, let's see. Last year I went to go see Motionless and White, and that was really fun. Cool. Being thrown around. How about you, young man? I don't look like it, but my two favorites are Slipknot. Slipknot was a really fun one from my uh, teenage years, and uh, Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters was great. Absolutely. That one's my favorite. Foo Fighters is my favorite. Yeah, mine is easily, uh, I've been to two Foo Fighters shows, but there was, the first one I went to is easily my favorite. Taylor Hawkins was still with the band, um, but it was, the both times I went and saw them, they were phenomenal. So either one of their shows were my absolute favorite. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna close and uh, ask the guys of the band where you can find them and what some of the upcoming projects they've got on their plate. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. There is not really anything except for X that we're not on. You can find us anywhere, usually at either Stadium Drive or Official Stadium Drive. Anything else? That's if you good. want us to. If you want us to, okay, that's cool. All right, guys, I think that's it. Uh, thank you so much for coming to Stadium Drive, and I look forward to seeing big things from you in the future.
continue to fall And whoever is the man she's with Love her for what she is Hey everybody, we're here today at the Comedy Stardome with Josh Johnson. Um, Josh, would you like to say hi? Uh, hello. Hello, <laughs> that's what you get. Um, Josh is a multifaceted uh, entertainer. He, uh, he writes for TV, he does stand-up, he does voiceover for TV shows, and I would like to see what he's going to do in the future. What have you got coming up that you'd like to talk about? I mean, hopefully, hopefully something that will impress you. I like that. That's my. That's honestly my biggest fear is that I will tell you all of my future plans, and you'll be like, "Why did I come here? <laughs> no. Why did Why did I come here? Why have we set up the cameras? You know, why Why are we sitting here? I I definitely plan on touring a bunch in the future and making that always, always a like a big facet of everything that I do. When I look at the year, I look at where I can go and and how I can meet fans and put on shows for them and everything. And then uh, when it comes to being on camera, I definitely want to do more acting and stuff. But for the most part, I, I think that uh, things in like the medium of, of uh, like streaming and, and podcasting are going to be bigger for me. Like I have been doing a live stream that I started this year uh, that I do semi-regularly when I'm not on the road. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I do my podcast with uh, my buddy Logan. This is called The Josh Johnson Show to make it as easy as possible. And um, we've been doing that for a few years. And so we've built up like a very loyal, uh, very sweet fan base that has brought me 
so many gifts. They bring Logan and I gifts, and it's it's honestly one of the most like heartwarming things. They'll make them. They'll That's make, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, they'll make. They'll like knit something, or they'll or they'll put something together, or they'll like make a hat, or like it's honestly. You put these things out, whether it, whether it's your jokes or it's a, it's an episode of a podcast. You put everything out, and you just do it because you're enjoying doing it, or because maybe someone will see it and they'll enjoy it. And then you meet someone who who liked it a lot, and it is weird that like it it, it feels weird in that moment. I imagine you know you've you've interviewed so many bands and everything. I imagine some musicians must feel like that. I'm sure there are musicians who know they're like, I'm the best that's ever done it, so I expect everyone to hear my music. Yeah. But every once in a while, I'm sure there's a band that you talk to where you're, they're like, we can't believe that we're this popular. Like, we were just making music and people really like it. And that's how I feel about jokes. Like, I'm, I'm just saying things that I, I think are funny and things that I think will make people laugh and however many people show up, show up. So that's... I'm just having a great time, you know. Do you have enough time in the day to get all that done? Specifically a podcast? Not really, no. Functionally, no. No, I haven't been sleeping or sleeping yeah. well. I get that. Um, do you, uh, how long is a particular episode on your podcast? Uh, so we do close to an hour, mm-hmm. you know. We get, we get pretty close to an hour every episode, and then we'll also do special things, like we will have um, sometimes just a whole mailbag episode where we open up fan mail and, and we talk about it, because people write in and they tell us stories, they write in and they uh, tell us things that they, that they thought we would talk about based off of an episode or something. And then we also have a, a Patreon where we will put out extra things, and so that also contributes to the me not sleeping. I could imagine if you have an hour podcast, how long does it actually take from soup to nuts to get one done and get it edited and looking really good? Honestly, way too close to an hour. I mean, like when you, when you really look at it, I'm, I'm sure that there are people out there that are like the, the absolute professionals that record for three hours. They chop it down to like the fine tuned best bits, the best of every, every week. But I think what people like about the the show, and I think that what um, what we enjoy about doing it, is that it is a uh, like a living journal. So you know, the people who who started listening to the podcast was because they follow me doing stand up and everything, and so this is almost a, a way to fill in the blanks of like when Logan and I go on the road and we do the shows. Obviously, the only people that can be at the shows are the people there right now, and so it gives the people at at home who miss that show or aren't in that state or couldn't make you know that night um, a recap of everything in and around the show. And I think that's what people enjoy about it. So it's not really a heavily edited show. That would be very embarrassing if it was. Well, I was going to say, it would sound like it would take a really long time to do, but it sounds like you guys just kind of see to your pants that thing and just let it rip. Mu- much more than we should. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Logan is doing, I would say, 90% of, of the work because I barely know how to edit an episode. So really... Same. Yeah, like once I get done and, and we're, you know, we're done talking and everything, I do sort of just try to think of a good title and that is the extent of my, of my aid. Everything else is really poor Logan by, by himself. Um, so, I mean, he's great at it and he makes a show that all these people like. So I'm very, very thankful to him to have him as a co-host and to have him as uh, someone that I can do shows with on the road and everything. We love Logan. Uh, I'd like to switch gears and let's talk about your work on The Daily Show, which I'm a massive fan of, and I have been since, gosh, I guess when Colbert was on there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I love the fact that you can take a situation and your brain can create something out of nothing. I find that incredibly uh, entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about writing for The Daily Show. That'd be great. I mean, it, it's, it's a real dream job because I think that for the most part, um, it, it's what taught me how to be a better storyteller overall because every, every so often there is, is something that needs to be covered that I think not just the general public but even me don't know that much about. So to, to learn about it, to come up with a perspective on it and to deliver that perspective 
in a way that that's funny all in a day is is a lot of work and takes a lot of learning and crafting and a lot of teaching like a lot of people taught me how, how to how to do that sort of thing so it's to the point now that i can do it for myself and it and is is translated in my stand up in a way that i'm very very thankful for um i don't think i would be the performer or the or the writer that i am without that experience there because everyone there is so so funny like ridiculously funny and I think that I, I I just count myself like so fortunate. Like it's 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 really been amazing. Uh, let's talk about uh, you talk about TV, and let's talk about you know you were doing some voice acting. Do you plan to get into other forms of acting? Sure, if they'll you know if they'll have me, then that <laughs> it's really up to them. Yeah. I'm I'm not holding out yeah. on on anyone. You're not just playing hard yeah. to get. Yeah, no, no. Marvel has not called me, and I've said we'll see. That yeah, that has that. not happened. So, uh, no, I'm definitely open to to all opportunities. I th I think that for the most part, you just have to weigh it in between what you're doing now, what you would rather be doing, and and what those sacrifices look like. Mm -hmm. And so, I think that for 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 the most part, I've I've. I can't complain. It's a beautiful life, and I'm very much enjoying where I am. But I think in in the future, yeah, definitely some more, some some more acting, both voice and live action things. Um, I love voice acting just because it's it's um, it's a it's a way to express where sometimes in in real acting or in life, y your actual like look and your body betray what you're trying to portray in the real world so if you're if you're trying to be tough right mm -hmm. like like if i was if i was trying to be tough to you right now if we both stood up i would be looking up at you <laughs> there's not there's not a world where i'm really going to intimidate you from down here you know what i mean whereas if it if it's a cartoon and now they've drawn me bigger than you and i can put on the voice now now we're in a different we're in a different then world you're 10 feet tall yeah yeah and so outside of you know Marvel live action doesn't really do that too often. At least that that I've watched. That that most things. One of the reasons people are even typecast is because they fit a certain look and they and their their demeanor is a certain type. And it's also how you come off to people. And so I think that that's why I love voice acting so much because it's like it's another level of you can be anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. My favorite part when I got to really delve into what you do is how active you are on social media. Your, oh, yeah. your your uh, your your TikTok page is great. Uh, whoever oh, does thanks. that, if you do that yourself, or if you have a team, very well done. Oh, Take thank a bow. you. Um, your YouTube uh, channel is is fantastic. Oh, thanks. And I know you've probably, there's a lot of work that goes into that. I don't think people realize how much goes into that. Mm -hmm. So I'd just like to say what a great job you've done with that and continued success with that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate. It. Yeah, as long as they don't change the algorithm, I feel like I'm really on my way. As long as everything stays the way it is now, then maybe I'll be all right. But if they ever like say people with with J's don't get views, then I'll, I'll, I'll pretty much be out of business. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. I'd like to see if there's anything else you'd like to tell everybody about your show here this weekend that they need to know or it's going to entice them to come see you. Um, I think that if I have not convinced them so far through my charms to come see me that there's really nothing else I can do that if you come to the show it will be like this well, I think that's uh, all that Amanda has given me time for uh, everybody come see Josh if you don't get a chance to come down to the Comedy Stardome check him out on social media I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how funny he is and what a rich fertile mind this man has it's very kind that's what I do thank you so much